This video will demonstrate the use of many diagnostic tools available in the TOP server. Many tools are available for testing and troubleshooting, including the TOP server event log, server and driver specific help files, the OPC Quick Client, communication diagnostics, and OPC diagnostics. Let's start with the OPC Quick Client. The OPC Quick Client is a sample client that can help you test connectivity to your devices. This is an important tool because it can be used to help isolate problems between top server and the device versus problems between top server and the client configuration. For instance, if you are seeing bad quality in your client application, one of the first things you can do is try connecting to top server with the quick client. If you can see values changing with good quality in the quick client, you can rule out the connection between top server and the device, and instead focus on the connection between top server and your client. If you are requesting tags dynamically from your client application, it is helpful to create a static tag or two in the top server to use for testing with the quick client. The quick client can be launched from both the server and the start menu. To launch the quick client from the server, just click on the icon labeled QC. To launch the quick client from the start menu, go to Start, All Programs, Software Toolbox, Top Server 5, OPC Quick Client. If you launch the Quick Client directly from the top server, it will auto build a project with all of the top server tags that are currently configured and subscribe to them. If you launch the Quick Client from the start menu, it will not create a connection to the top server or start subscribing to all of the tags. Instead, you will have to do this manually. The OPC Quick Client is divided into three sections. In the left hand pane, you have the tag database that you can browse through. The main window in the center shows the details for each tag. You will see the fully qualified item ID, a data type, the value, timestamp, and quality. At the bottom, we have the event log, which displays any warning or error messages. In order to view data for static tags created in the server, click on the group called channel.device. Top Server also has many built-in system and statistic tags for monitoring communication and providing general error feedback to client applications. The number of system tags available at both the channel level and device level depends on the nature of the driver being used. In addition, application level system tags allow client applications to monitor the server's status. Any system or statistic tags available can be seen in the quick client. Descriptions for any of these tags can be found in the server help file under tag management. Speaking of the top server help files, let's take a look at those now. The top server installs two different types of help files, the server help file and the specific driver help files. You can launch the server help file by opening the top server interface and clicking on help server help. The top server help file includes information on the top server in general, such as features, options, project property settings, and error descriptions. If you are looking for specific information on the behavior of a particular driver or driver-specific error messages, you need to look at the driver help file. Expanding any of these driver-specific help books will display a link that will launch the specific driver help file if you click on it. You can also launch a specific driver help file by going to Help Driver Help. This will launch a dialog box so you can browse to the particular driver that you need and click OK to open the help file. Now let's take a look at the top server event log. The event log includes messages for any communication errors between the server and the device as well as informational messages. There are currently four types of events that can be recorded. Error events include error messages such as the rejection of bad OPC item requests. Warning events include warning messages such as device not responding. Information events include server startup and shutdown messages and security events include security messages. For example, if you are seeing a message in the event log that says attempt to add item failed, this means a client attempted to access a tag with the incorrect syntax. This error should be resolved as it can cause performance problems in the server. To resolve this error, remove or correct the tag address within the client. You can also choose what types of messages you want to include in the event log by right clicking on the event log and going to the event filter. By default, we show all events, but you can set it to show just error events or warning events to help locate errors in the event log. The event log can also be saved as a text file by right-clicking and choosing Save as Text File. Error message descriptions and suggested solutions can be found in the top server help files. 
The top server communication diagnostics allow you to capture the protocol packets that are being transmitted and received between the server and the device. This allows us to verify that the expected sends and receives are occurring for a particular protocol. Diagnostics are not enabled by default. They can be enabled when you first go through the process of setting up a channel, but they can also be enabled and disabled through the channel and device properties window. Then you simply need to click the Enable Diagnostics box and click OK. You can launch the actual diagnostics by right-clicking on the channel or device and going to Diagnostics. This is what we would expect to see in the channel diagnostics. Now please remember that the top server must have a client application connecting to it requesting information in order for anything to show up in this window. The top server will always just sit there passively and do nothing until a client application connects to it and starts requesting data. You can save these diagnostics by right-clicking in the window and choosing Save as Text File. The OPC diagnostics are only useful if your client application is making an OPC DA connection to the server. It captures their OPC requests and responses between the client and the server to show the OPC calls being made. In order to enable OPC diagnostics, go to File Project Properties in Top Server and navigate to the OPC DA Settings tab. Check Enable Diagnostics Capture and click OK. You can view the OPC diagnostics by going to View OPC Diagnostics. You will see this dialog appear. Press the play button to start capturing the diagnostics. You should expect to see many OPC events being fired. An event is a method call that a client makes to the server or a callback that the server makes to the client. In this case, we have a long list of on data change events that are being fired for all of the tags that we are subscribed to that have changing values. If we highlight an event, the details of that event can be seen in the bottom section of this window. The important parameters to check are the value, quality, and error codes. You can also filter the OPC diagnostics if you need to find certain types of messages more efficiently. To do so, go to Diagnostics Filter. By default, all of the messages are selected. To save the OPC diagnostics, go to File Save As in the window. You can adjust the properties of the Event Log, Communications Diagnostics, and OPC Diagnostics by going to the Top Server Settings window. To do so, right-click on the administration icon that runs in the system tray and choose Settings. Then navigate to the Event Log tab. Here you can change the communication port for the event log if you need to. In most cases, the default is fine. The persistence mode specifies how the log is saved to the hard drive. Options include memory, single file, and extended data store. The default setting for the event log is single file. The default setting for both OPC diagnostics in communications diagnostics is memory, meaning no persistence. When memory is selected, all events are recorded in memory and a disk log is not generated. The contents are removed each time the server is started. When single file is selected, a single disk-based log is generated. The contents are stored from this file on disk when the server is started. When extended data store is selected, a potentially large number of records are persisted to disk in a data store distributed across many files. The contents are restored from the distributed file store on disk when the server is started. The max records parameter specifies the number of records that the log system retains before the oldest records start being deleted, and the log file path specifies where the disk log is stored. The max single file size specifies the size that a single data store file must attain before a new data store file can be started. And the min dates to preserve specifies that individual data store files are deleted from disk when the most recent record stored in the file is at least this number of days old. When seeking help troubleshooting a communication issue, it is important to generate an application report to go along with a description of the problem. You should also include the operating system and the versions of any client application being used with the top server. The application report utility generates a report that includes information about your system and details on the top server installation. You can launch the utility by going to Start All Programs, Software Toolbox, Top Server 5, Utilities, Application Report. In most instances, you will leave the default options selected. Click Next through each window until you receive a dialog that displays where the report is stored by default. You can create a new folder and save it in a different location if preferred. You should see these files within the Top Server folder in the Application Report. Besides the tools we already discussed, 
There's a lot of information on the Top Server website to help you find answers to your questions. Whenever we have problems or questions that we see frequently, we try to get the information or solution documented on our website so users can help themselves. Software Toolbox has customers all over the globe, so sometimes when they are having a problem on their plant floor, it may be outside of our normal hours of operation. We try to provide as many resources available 24-7 to help them solve their issue. This concludes our overview of the Top Server Diagnostic Tools. As always, our support team is available to help you every step of the way. If you find you have questions or need any assistance, please do not hesitate to contact us.